Good to be with you. Good morning. I want to congratulate all of you on successfully completing the task of setting your clock ahead one hour yesterday. Good job. Uh, if you see me just start laughing up here for no apparent reason, that's going to be because someone walks in and walks out when they realize they're an hour late. So it's been a couple of years since that happened, but it happens more often than you think. If you would turn to the middle of your bulletin, uh, I have the following announcements. Uh, obviously, we're back here this Wednesday for dinner at... 6 and church at 7. Uh, dinner this week is from the youth. It's going to be Taco Tuesday plus one. Um, and um, uh, for the, the church service, we're continuing our series on the uh, Passion of Jesus recorded in the Gospel of St. John. Um, we are still putting together the Easter vocal choir and the bell choir. You still have, if you have wanted to take part and were unable to so far, uh, we're still just introducing the song to the gang, so you have uh, uh, for vocal choir, so you can still uh, get into that. Uh, for bell choir, uh, practice will be after second service today, and there's uh, plenty of time for folks to get in on that too. Okay. Uh, let's see, men's Bible breakfast is this Saturday as we continue our study on Noah. You can sign up for Easter lilies back there. Um, a reminder that one week from Friday, is our 20th annual uh, brisket and basketball at my house for men's fellowship. Um, I sent out an email this week. I think I got three replies. So um, I don't know if you guys didn't see the email. But anyway, uh, let me know today if you're planning on attending. I want to make sure that there's enough meat, okay? So, because um, that's going to be what uh, I provide that uh, evening. Uh, make sure you see the Holy Week schedule here. And as always, I need to remind you that our Good Friday Tenebrae service is at 8 o'clock. Uh, whereas everything else is at 7 if it's in the evening uh, because with the time change and everything, uh, doing the service of darkness while the sun is still up does not work. Uh, bake sale is going to happen on Sunday, March 24th to raise funds for the Easter egg hunt, which is on the 30th. You've got the details here on that. Um, I believe that is all I've got for you this morning. Anything I'm forgetting or neglecting? Okay. Maybe you're still asleep and you're not sure, but... Um, so then when it comes to our birthdays, uh, Ruth Avery has a birthday today. So Avery's, if you're watching online, uh, happy birthday. And Max Toll has a birthday tomorrow. So Max, if you're watching online, happy birthday. Then let us turn to our first hymn this morning on this uh, fourth Sunday in Lent. Uh, Love divine, all loves excelling, and God bless our worship together this morning.
a congregational police stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Almighty God, our, eternal, our, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. for the readings. War Sunday after Lent, the Old Testament reading comes from Numbers 
starting with chapter 21, fourth verse. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people. So the people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make the fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if the serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. This lesson comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, starting with the first verse. And when you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated with us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not by your own doing. It is a gift of God, not the results of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, for which God prepared beforehand so that we should walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now stand to sing the Lenten verse, and we remain standing for the words of the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Jesus said, words I believe you know. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been carried out in God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated for the sermon hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The text for your sermon this morning, the biblical basis for our thoughts together here today are the words of the Gospel lesson, which I read a few moments ago. John chapter 3, you know what. Okay, so I don't know if you realize this or not, but we're basically in the middle Sunday of Lent. And the people who set up the scripture readings for our church calendar traditionally put a set of texts in Lent, the fourth Sunday of Lent, that are a little lighter, a little more uplifting. Because if you think about it, we had the temptation of Jesus and we had Peter telling Jesus he couldn't go and uh, be crucified. And last week we had Jesus throwing the money changers out and, and that whole mess. And now all of a sudden today we get John 3.16, and we have the reminder of God's love. So today we're going to talk about love, genuine love. And to begin with, I want to remind you that, I was going to say everyone loves a good love story, but I guess that isn't true. Most everyone loves a good love story. They're always those guys, and I'm accused of being one of those guys, that only likes movies if things blow up and there are car chases and whatever. But crowds love to see a good love story at the movies, right? You have West Side Story, which was a retelling of Romeo and Juliet. And there's The Sound of Music. And then there's actually the movie Love Story, which came out in 1970. Uh, another retelling of Romeo and Juliet, which taught us love means never having to say you're sorry, if you remember that line, if you're old enough. There's The Notebook. There's Gone with the Wind. There's Die Hard. Okay, maybe not Die Hard. There's the classic tales like the original Romeo and Juliet. I assume that high school kids still have to read a little Shakespeare uh, in their uh, curriculum. There's TV shows like This Is Us. There's something about a love story that makes a lot of folks feel good. And love is a wonderful gift. It is given at creation from our Heavenly Father. Love is something that all of us human beings desire. We want to feel the warmth the security, the tenderness that comes from being loved or being in love. We want to be loved by our parents, our siblings, our spouse, our children, our friends, and our co-workers, maybe even your pastor. Yet no matter how great our love story is, it pales in comparison to the unconditional love that God the Father has shown to us through his Son, Jesus. For as you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now often we think of love as an emotion, a good feeling, some nice sweet words, and there's nothing wrong with those things and they certainly can be a legitimate part of love, yet at some point, if love is to be a genuine love, a true love, Movie reference, Princess Bride. It must be willing to be more than just words. Genuine love needs to be something we do, not just feel. I mean, sure, it's easy to love that little baby or that little puppy in the window, but what about loving the unlovable? Because obviously God calls us to love one another. So how good are you at loving the unlovable? When was the last time you were confronted by a rude coworker, a relentless salesperson, someone you totally disagree with, or, or one of your enemies, or any combination of these things, and showed them true and genuine Christian love? The opportunities for us to show love are not just by accident. We are supposed to show genuine love to the people that God has intentionally put into our lives, that he has asked us to care for. God's unconditional love now sets our agenda, guides our decisions, determines our actions through the same kind of genuine love that he has first shown us. I want to remind you that most of the time, genuine love is hard work. Love is not always romantic comedies, Hallmark cards, flowers, and Hershey's chocolate kisses. Genuine love does not always make us feel warm and fuzzy inside. 
often genuine love means rolling up our sleeves and giving it all that we have. It's important to note that when we live our lives in service to love others, to love our neighbor, it is the beginning of a new life, a genuine life focused on and centered in Jesus Christ and the love he wants us to share. Now, I mentioned before that there's that quote from that 1970 movie, Love Story, that love means never having to say you're sorry. Well, with all due respect to Eric Siegel, who wrote the novel, genuine love sometimes means saying, I was wrong and I am sorry. Sometimes genuine love means that you love your neighbor enough to call them out on their sins and hold them accountable, reminding them that they too need to repent. And we talked about how Jesus does that for us last week. Not only is this kind of love hard work, it can also be painful work. Genuine love sometimes includes sleepless nights and a broken heart. Because how painful is it when your love is not returned? And I assume we've all been there. So to summarize this first part here, and to remind all of us what it truly means to show genuine love to someone else, I want to tell you this little bit about me. When I got out of sermon, seminary and went to Michigan, I'd be driving around in my car, and there was lots of driving since I had two congregations that were separated by 45 miles. And it did not take long for me to realize that top 40 popular rock radio was just not my thing anymore because I grew up listening to that stuff. But in the 90s, I didn't like grunge, I didn't like hip-hop, and I'm like, you know, I'm just going to stop listening to music, and I had my CDs, I had my cassette tapes, that's a metal. I didn't have 8-tracks, but, but anyway. So when I got to Oklahoma, I had some friends and knew some people that were listening to what was called the new country, uh, you know, Garth Brooks, that sort of stuff. And there you go. And uh, I realized listening to the country stations in Tulsa that a lot of 90s country sounded like 70s rock and roll with maybe a violin or a, a another you know, steel guitar added. So I started listening to that stuff. And then when I started a courting of that young lady back there in the corner, uh, you know, she also listened to this stuff. And there was a song that was out when we were dating and after we were married that we both liked by Clint Black. And maybe you've heard that guy's name. I will tell you that while he was a very popular country and western singer, he was actually from New Jersey. I found that out this week. Uh, but he did this song where at the end of every verse, he said something different about love. And I want to share those lines with you here. And he wrote this song. So he sang and he wrote, Love isn't something that we find. Love isn't something that we have. Love isn't something we're in. Love isn't something we said. Love isn't something or some place we fall. It's something that we do. And friends, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is when you find out what genuine love is all about. For it is at those times when love is more than an emotion. It is an action. An action that requires you to give up yourself for the sake of others. So, what does love have to do with Lent? Well, everything. Because God's love for us became real and visible in the actions of the life, death, and resurrection of his only Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This unconditional, genuine love that Jesus has for us is at the heart of Lent. Today we are inching closer to Good Friday, the day when Jesus showed the ultimate genuine love by dying on the cross to save us from our sins. I'm sure you're familiar with John 3.16, which I read from there and read from here, but how well do you remember John 3.17? Because that's almost as good. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. You see, no greater love can be expressed than what Jesus did for us. Jesus has not been sent into the world to condemn it. He was sent to save the world, and it is only through Jesus that we can know what genuine love looks like. Jesus has shown the ultimate genuine love for you and me by fully giving himself up for us and to us. 
And Jesus has not only given us his love, but he's also given us all that he is. His, in his very body and blood shed for us on this very altar, for example. He's given us all that he has and all that he is so that we may love one another as he first loved us. Today, out of genuine love, Jesus makes us his very own. And it's seen in the epistle for today, verses 4 and 5. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. That's genuine love. And this love that our Heavenly Father has for us did not come easy. His love for us cost Him a great deal. As a matter of fact, it cost Him His only Son. Because it is in the triune God that we see what real, genuine love looks like. In God the Father, we see a genuine love because He sent us Jesus. In God the Son, we see a genuine love that spreads out His arms and dies for us. In God the Holy Spirit, we see a genuine love that does not let us live apart from God, but calls us back home to Him. Now, if you think you deserve God's love, you're wrong, because let's be honest, most of the time we're really not that lovable. You and I are the rebellious children who have not returned our Father's love, but instead have chosen to love how and what we want to love. Yet even in our sin, we are reminded that God is love. And you may remember that verse is in the first letter of John, chapter 4. And that he continues to love us unconditionally, even though we don't deserve it. The problem with earthly love is that it's all over the place. One moment I love you, the next I don't because I'm mad at you. In effect, Jesus is saying, forget about yourself, what you think, how you feel, And don't judge my love by the fickle ways that the world judges love. Instead, look to me and I'll show you genuine love. Okay. So now we're making the final turn. Today's finish line is in view. So I want to tell you what I'm telling you this way. Once upon a time there was a pastor, not me, who began a wedding sermon with the words, what's love got to do with it, got to do with it? What's love but a secondhand emotion? Now, this wasn't me. Now, I did begin a wedding sermon once by singing the Swedish chef song from The Muppet Show, you know, burp, 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 and that got an interesting reaction from those gathered, but that's, this was somebody else. And he offered $20 to the folks at the wedding if anyone knew who wrote the song and the year it was written. Anybody know? Now, she sang it. She did not write it. The words from Tina Turner's 1984 hit were written by Graham Lyle and Terry Britton. And they remind us that the world sees love in a very different way than the church sees love. Because so often people think of love as just an emotion, a good feeling, sweet words. And again, there's nothing wrong with those things. Yet we are reminded that genuine love is so much more than that. So maybe the better question is this. What has Jesus Christ's love got to do, got to do with it? Everything. Because of Jesus and his Lenten love for us, we as believers will never perish, but have eternal life in him. So here's your takeaway today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him has eternal life. And what that means is that Jesus put his genuine love into action for you by dying on the cross and rising again for your sins. Even though we offer him nothing in return, God the Father says this is not the end of your story. I want to write a new genuine love story just for you. And he did just that for us by giving up his only son, that whoever lives, whoever believes in him, will live forever. You are loved, genuinely. In the name of Jesus, amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, may it keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.
Heavenly Father, please receive and bless these gifts which we give back to you from that which you have first given to us. Amen. We now stand and confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. From the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord God, draw us into your light. Expose wherever we have thought, spoken, and acted against you, that in repentance we might look to your Son lifted up on the cross and be saved. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, you gave your only Son so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Bless the work of missionaries as they carry this gospel to the ends of the earth, that many may hear of your love in Christ Jesus and be saved through him. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you have set Joseph, our president, and Kevin, our governor, as authorities over us for our good. Bless and sustain them with all they need to govern us, that we might be ruled wisely and in accord with your word. Protect our troops, including Thomas, Matthew, Evan, and Chris, Maya, John, Ben, and Debbie, Seth, Christian, Jacob, and Jonathan, Nick, Hyojin, Preston, and Tyler. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you are our light and our salvation. Uh, hide in your shelter uh, all those folks who suffer in body, mind, or soul. We keep in mind especially uh, those who are printed in our bulletin insert here this morning. And we also take a moment and pray silently in our hearts for those that we know to be in need of your grace and mercy today. Keep them in their day of trouble from falling in faithfulness, fear, and uphold them with your peace in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, whose steadfast love endures forever, we lift up our voices in thanksgiving. You have redeemed us out of trouble and gathered us here to feed us. Satisfy the longing of our hearts with your Son's good things, his body and blood, that we may abide in your eternal peace. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, you have made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins. Cause your spirit to be at work in us that we may not carry out the sinful desires of our bodies and minds, but walk in the good works he has prepared for us. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you've had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. may be seated. Now the feast of the Lord is prepared for the people of the Lord. Come to the feast.
We now stand and sing the post-communion canticle, the Nunc Dimittis. thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Remembering that Jesus said we need the faith of small children, we conclude with the hymn, Jesus Loves Me, We Remain Standing. Once again, our Sunday morning worship together here this morning. Um, a reminder that we'll be starting a Bible class here in approximately 25 minutes. Um, so otherwise, God be with you and bless you this day and this week.